Hello everyone, and welcome to the Friday Focus. Today I'm going to be showing you some of the experimentation I've been doing in my own works to create water effects. So what I would recommend with this is if you can get actual water in your shots, absolutely get the actual water in your shots. But for those times when it just isn't going to work out, here is something you can do to create a water-based illusion in your images. And today we're going to be working with a ton of layers. It's going to get a bit complicated, so just be aware that this is not going to be one of my easier edits. So what I have here is one of the pictures we did during our shoot with um, our models out in the gorge. And we're all dressed up like mermaids here. And what I want to do is I want to add some water to this lower section of the image in between these logs and around them. And to do that, I'm going to start with one of my textures. And I'm going to go ahead and show you that. So this texture is one of the light-based textures we made for our stock packs, which you can actually get at our Etsy site here if you are interested. Otherwise, any kind of light distortion like this, where you have a good bright spot and it kind of drifts off and you've got a little bit of warbling in the light, is going to be beneficial for creating this water look. So I'm going to go Control a Control c and then we're going to go back to our image and do Control v then do Control t to transform, hold the Shift button down, and flip this image around. Now that we have it here, I'm actually going to move it down a bit. I want to make sure it's nice and solid throughout the areas I need it, and then I'm going to hit Enter. Alright, so now that we have this layer here and you can see our texture is in it, we're going to go ahead and change the mode. We're going to go up here and go to Screen. As you can see, that creates an effect in the image where it's kind of creating a clouding look. But I want to intensify this a bit, so we're going to go up to Image, Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast first. So by adding some contrast to this, I'm creating a little bit more clouding in that section. And that's working out pretty well. I also want to increase the brightness a little bit. After that, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. In Hue and Saturation, I'm actually going to adjust the Hue Saturation a little bit, and maybe also the Tones. OK. So with that done, we are still selected on our texture here. So with that done, we still have our texture clicked on right here, and we're going to go ahead and create a layer mask. So just so you guys know, all this is kind of new to me. I've been experimenting with it for the last week or two. It's a learning process, and I hope you guys get something out of it. I'm pretty happy with how the looks end up in the end. We have our layer mask here. Let me go ahead and go to our brush. We've got our brush selected. I actually want to make it a slightly harder hardness. So we go to about 50. Switch so we have black selected since we're going to be erasing. And then what we're going to do is just erase this effect out of our image to the zone we definitely want it to be present at. And I'm actually going to back that up a little bit. I think I took a little bit too much. And what I want to do is I want her to be out of the water, but I expect that behind her there should still be a bit of water. I'm also expecting this stump right here is going to be a little bit out of the water as well. Now I'm going to go ahead and flip and just do a little bit of retouch work, adding the effect back in where I definitely want it. So right under here, making sure it goes all the way up. And zoom in a little bit. Get these little spots. And with that done, there's one more thing I want to do, and that's just a little bit of effect 
dampening. So we're going to flip to removal again, and we're going to turn our opacity down quite a bit. Let's go to about 30. Oh, and also let's make sure that we have a nice soft brush again, because we want these effects to be pretty soft. Essentially what this does is it will allow us to kind of show off areas that are less underwater than others. Also shadowed zones would be a little bit less affected than others. I'm actually going to turn it down even more now, get a much more precise effect. All right, so with that done, we're again going to go back and swap to adding more back in. I'm going to keep it at 13% and just go over areas that I think I did a little bit too much on. All right, so with that, we kind of have a base effect in our image. Um, and we're going to do a little bit more to make this a lot more believable. So now we're going to add a new layer. And with this one, we're going to start adding some dark blue spots. So to get those dark blue spots, what I'm actually going to do is sample directly from our image. I'm going to look for an area where it's like, yeah, that's a really good underwater shadow, like this area right here. That right there is a pretty good dark blue spot color. So with that, I am going to go ahead and start affecting the image again. So we get our brush, make it a bit bigger. Let's go ahead and make the effect a little more intense. And then just for certain areas, just start adding a little bit of dark sh underwater shadows. All right, so now with those effects in place, um, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of distortion to our background. Now to do that, we're going to want to create a background copy. So let's take our background, and go ahead and copy it. And on this copy, we're going to do a couple of different effects. First thing we're going to do is go to filter and then liquify. We're going to take our liquify tool here and just very carefully kind of warp how some of the objects are looking. This will kind of give it a more watery feel. There we go. Click OK. And now things are starting to look a little bit muddled. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to Filter, Distort, Wave. So Wave is kind of tricky. Um, <laughs> that's the easiest I'll put it. So it just takes a little bit of work to get to a point where you think you've got something that is going to be workable. I recommend if you're working with large size files like I am that your scale is pretty up there. And then you just kind of work to see where you get just enough distortion that you think it'll work. I'm going to click OK. Holy gods, that was probably too much. Let's go back and do that again. There we go. So with a little bit of distortion, I'm going to go ahead and put a layer mask on this image, make sure that I have black selected, and then remove some most all of the distortion from the upper portion of the image. And just fix a couple portions so that we get a little bit of variance happening in there. Now what I might do is I might take my brush, turn down the opacity, let's say about 46%, and 
and then go over that area once just to kind of create a little bit of distortion between the objects in the water. Because light reflections can be pretty distorting. So there, now we've got a little bit of movement under the water and it's a little bit harder to tell precisely what's going on. So with that done, let's go ahead and add another layer. And with this one, what I want to do is take that dark blue we had and I'm just going to add portions of it into these sections. Just kind of keep the front area nice and dark. Perhaps even do overlay with it and down the opacity of it. Or I might keep the opacity all the way up and then go to image. Oh, let's make sure we've got that selected. Image, adjustments, and then hue and saturation. I might turn that hue and saturation down quite a bit. So now we have our color in place. We've got a little bit of distortion going on in the image. And another thing we can do is actually use some real water texture to add a little bit more to it. So here's just a few textures I've pulled up. But this one right here is an actual lake. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that. Um, one particular aspect of this water that I really like is how it's reflecting off of the floor beneath it. Um, so I would much prefer this texture over more of this wave texture back here. So I'm gonna copy this, go to our image, and paste it. And then we're gonna go ahead and put this into our image. And it looks like we're gonna need to increase the size. So let's go ahead and say enter. So now what I need to do is blend it. I'm going to go ahead and try overlay. That's working pretty well, but maybe I'll do a few adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that layer selected. Go up to image, adjustments, and let's go ahead and play around with hue and saturation to adjust the color. I'm going to go ahead and turn the saturation down a little bit because I'm liking that the yellow is um, kind of blocking out the blues of the original tones. Let's make it a little darker, I think. There we go. And then click OK. So with that selected, we're going to make a new layer mask on this layer. Make sure your opacity is all the way up and black is selected. And then remove areas where you don't want to see this texture. And then once you have the base area removed, again, reduce your opacity to a safe, like, discernible amount. And then go ahead and kind of lighten the texture in areas where you think it's too thick. Oh yeah, don't forget this sucker right here. So I like to reduce wave textures against objects just because I think seeing a little more of the object is more realistic. And now that we're at this point, it's really easy to start adjusting all sorts of areas where you're finding flaws in the textures. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one and then do a little bit of work in this area. Notice how that's a little bit too, maybe a little bit too much right there. I'm going to go ahead and maybe just lighten some of these guys up a little bit. Oops. Let's go ahead and add a layer mask to this one. Actually, I'm, a, yeah, I'm actually enjoying how it looks on that section, so I'm going to leave those alone. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more color texturing. So we're going to go to our base texture again, go to hue and saturation, just kind of move this around until we hit an area with, that we think is appropriate. So actually, yeah, removing the color from the shadows I think is appropriate in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And that gets sort of that blue area right there and actually kind of tones down the color a bit. So here's another thing we need to deal with now. Um, now that we've added our textures in, as you can tell, some of them are a little bit unrealistically sharp in different areas of the image. So we're going to go ahead to that top texture and we're going to take the blur tool and then just blur out areas that we think are overly sharp. 
So you can either do it with the blur tool as I'm doing right now, or I'll show you the other method. We can go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And we can do the full radius of how much blur we want over that texture. Say OK. And then what we can do is paint in the areas that can be sharp by doing a history brush. So we've got our history brush selected and it's at 43%. I guess that's appropriate for now. So the last thing I'm looking at here is I can see that back here it's still a little bit easy to see this area even though we're looking through quite a bit of water so I find that a bit unrealistic. So what we're going to do about that is we're going to go ahead and start a new layer, tuck it underneath this texture right here and make sure we have, how about let's just do blacks and whites at this point. So we got this black selected. We're going to go ahead with 37% I think. Oh, make sure you got your brush. Oops. There we go. And let's fill that area in. And that's a bit intense, so what we're going to do is we're going to reduce that just to the area that is necessary. I think that's working a bit better. So now we have pretty decent illusion of water. I'm going to work on this section again, uh, the one I just created with hue and saturation. See if I can't add a little bit of color to it. Might have to use a different tool. Actually, let's go ahead and use selective color. I think I made it too basic of a black. So we'll go to the blacks and we'll add some blue to them. Maybe a hint of some greens, but mostly some cyans. And again, any area you see where you're like, oh, I, think, I feel like there's a bit too much effect right there, you can go ahead and remove. I'm going to actually get a sharper brush going here for that so that it creates more solid zones. And I'm going to go ahead and remove a little bit of this right here. I feel like this should be a little more solid since it's closer to the surface. Another thing I might do right here is add a bit of dark. I'm actually going to go to that layer again to do this and just add a bit of dark. Make sure this is soft again to this edge right here since this would be wet from water. Maybe what I'll do is go burn shadows and we're going to go to Give it a bit more of a wet wood look. So there we go. There's the wet water look. Another thing we can do is we could add some light textures over the top of the water to give the illusion of reflections. So I brought a couple of samples of light that we could do this with. Maybe we'll give this one a shot and the other one a shot. I'm honestly not sure what's going to happen. It's an experiment. So we'll want to make sure this is on the top and then we're going to go ahead and blend it. I'm going to use overlay for that. That's pretty cool. And then with that overlay, let's just go ahead and make sure it's not darkening our too water too much by going to brightness and contrast and testing how it is working. There we go. So the last thing I want to do is just make sure that this little log right here is not getting too buried under all these different effects because it probably is a bit. Oh, and also make sure this line is gone. So quick brush and brush and get rid of our effect edge. There we go. 
So now I'm going to go through each of these layers and just make sure that this stump is uncovered in the areas I want it to be uncovered. So another thing I'm noticing now is that these water textures, whenever they cross shadows, especially against sticks closer to the surface, don't look right. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those areas by going back to this layer, which is our water texture layer. And we're also going to have to go to this layer to remove it as well. So usually in areas of shadows, light does not reflect as well. So we're kind of mimicking that. All right, so I think this is where I'm going to leave this image for this tutorial. There's still a lot I'm figuring out on how to make this effect even better, but this is a start of what I've been working on for how to create pools of water in your portrait images around your models so that you can have pools of water in a place where they do not exist. So let's go ahead and quickly look through our layers here again. Let's go ahead and remove everything. This is how our image started. We added in this layer that warps the object so that it would be under the water layer a little bit so that we can create that illusion of water warping the way things look. We added in some blue texture to kind of create the illusions of water kind of reflecting light in deeper pooled areas. We added in a couple extra light textures to help along those areas. Darkened the background behind our model here so that it creates the illusion of us looking through a deeper pool of water added a water texture over the top, and then added some light reflection. So this is just a basic way to start experimenting and finding ways to add water into images where it does not exist. You could even do this over the top of your model if you want them to look like they are actually in the water themselves. And I have a couple of mermaid shots available here that you can see where we have done that. I hope that helps. Thanks so much, sorry this was such a long tutorial, and don't forget to subscribe for more.